Hey everybody, this is round two of my playthrough of Thistletop Delve. That's part of the Burnt Offerings adventure in the Rise of the Rune Lords Pathfinder adventure card game. We have just closed, shockingly, after one card, the, the Goblin Fortress. Again, because we closed it last scenario as well, or the scenario before that. No, last scenario. So that's, that's done, which is great, because that buys us a bunch of time in our timer deck. But Valeros is there, he's closed it down, he's defeated a Goblin Raider henchman twice, and successfully closed it. So now Sioni is traveling deep, deep, deep into the Thessalonian dungeon. Thessalonian, Th Thessal, the, the Thessalonian Empire was an ancient empire like 10,000 years ago on Galarian. So it's super old stuff. Who knows what we'll find here? I mean, no one really knows because it's a completely random selection of cards. But let's read about it. Jagged runes adorn the surfaces of this unfathomably ancient ruin. In places, it looks as if whole walls should fall away into rubble, but unseen forces work to hold them in place. At this location, if you play a spell with the arcane trait, you may immediately draw a card. That's interesting. Uh, when closing, succeed an intelligence or, or arcane check. This is the perfect location, I guess, for Sioni, honestly. I mean, it sounds like this is kind of in her wheelhouse, so that's good, I guess. Um, she hasn't increased, she hasn't uh, taken a timer card, so she will, we'll flip that over. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe this is the villain, for all I know, the way this has been going. Oh, you know what? She hasn't, she hasn't drawn a hand yet. One, two, three, four, five, six cards for Sioni. One of them has to be a spell, or she will essentially mulligan. And there's no spell here. So it looks like we're mulliganing. Uh, so there's a spell in there. There's two spells in there. Cool. And an attack one. That's the really important one, I think. Although, as I keep having to remind myself, she's got that uh, that innate attack spell that she's got the, at the expense of a discarded card. The weird thing about the benefit of this thing, where you, you may immediately draw a card, is that drawing a card is kind of a bad thing as well. Because then you have to, at the end of your turn, you have to discard it. So, I don't know. That That seems a little bit suspicious. Okay, we've done everything that we need to do for maintenance. So she will draw, a, or she will explore. As I say, I have no idea what this is. I half expect it to be the villain. It's arcane armor. That's great. So it's a check of four to uh, acquire. She got a 12 on a d12. She has a plus two anyway. Uh, it would have been tough for her to not, not acquire this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a global rule here. Oh, items or weapons. This is neither an item nor a weapon. It is a spell, so she has acquired this legitimately. I mean, honestly, she would have, with a roll of a 12, she would have, you know, acquired it anyway. Okay, so now she's got too many cards in her hand, and it's the end of her turn. So, technically speaking, she has to discard something. She could discard the... No? Yeah, I don't... Oh, you know what she could do is recharge... She could recharge this to peek at the top. But I don't know if that's really worth doing. I kind of feel like it might be better for her to... I mean, she's got this arcane armor. I think it's going to be better for her to... I want to avoid discarding. You always want to avoid discarding. Recharging is always preferable because recharging just goes at the bottom of your draw deck. And draw deck is how you determine whether you're alive or not. If you have no draw deck and you have to draw a card, then you are dead. I've just recharged detect magic which means that she is able to scry she can look at the top card without encountering it this is a large chest the difficulty to defeat this barrier is increased by the adventure deck number so that's one if defeated you get 1d4 random weapons from the box into your hand okay that's so enticing so she would need a dexterity of 10 or a strength of 11 to defeat that large chest. There's no way she could attain either of those scores. 
It's not true. Um, dexterity. Dexterity. She has a D8 in dexterity. So she could, in theory, discard a blessing to add another die to it. I think that might actually be worth it. It seems like they're really goading me into this, but... So she'd need a dexterity of 10, so she'd have to roll a 5. Well, she'd have to roll... Yeah, so discard this card to add one die. I don't know, I'm going to risk it. I mean, you only live once. So I'm going to roll this D t D8 twice and hope for a 10 across the two D8 rolls. That's a 1. And that's an 8. Brilliant. So if... If there hadn't been an increase in the difficulty, she would have absolutely gotten it. Unfortunately, that's not that wasn't to be. It wasn't a trapped chest, so that's good. So she she doesn't get the thing, but she doesn't she doesn't take damage or anything. Okay, so she's down to five cards in her hand, which I mean that's good. Uh, so I'm going to draw back up to six for her, and then oh yeah, so this is that weapon that she got from the last scenario. I don't know what she's gonna do with it. It's so a plus one sword, so it's actually not bad to have. Um, it would actually... Oh, it's actually quite good to have for her to have. So yeah, this could be great. That could actually be a, almost a game changer for her. Because, I mean, otherwise she's going to melee with a d4. Um, with that, it's a d4 plus a d6 plus a 1. Okay, so that's her turn. I'm happy with that. Uh, now Valeros is going to join her. Does he have all of the cards he needs? No. Did I forget to draw up? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, so, long sword, long spear, blessing of the gods, and chain mail. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah, no, no good, actually. Quite good. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'd love to have a bastard sword, but um, you can't always have what you want. So, did I? Yes, I did flip over a timer card, so he's going to explore. And it's a spyglass. Reveal this card to add a d6 to perception. That's a weapon... No, wisdom perception. Well, his wisdom is a d4. So that's not going to be all that great. Um, but let's see. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's got a fighting chance. d4. Four. You see that? Four? Yeah. Uh, four. Yeah, that's great. Wow, he got a thing. Good for you, Valeros. But, of course, now he's got five cards in his hand, which, naturally... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The difficulty of checks to acquire items or weapons is increased by two. That's not a four, that's a six. He did not get that item. Oh well. Nice try, though. Uh, so he's got four cards in his hand, so he doesn't have to draw up any. Uh, I'm going to just proceed. Because, once again, I've, I've cleared out a whole location already. I'm not too worried about the timer deck as such. Sioni, to your turn. Explore. There we go. Auric Van Kaskren. This is a henchman card. So, we're about to close this location. If defeated, succeed at a Charisma 5 check to search the location deck, choose a boon to add to your hand, then shuffle the location deck. If defeated, you may uh, immediately attempt to close the location. So it's a combat check of 10. It's pretty standard stuff, really. She's even got Valeros here, so she can go pretty strong uh, at this guy with her arcane... Arcane armor, with her force missile, which gives her the uh, ability to roll. Well, it gives her an arcane bonus of two, so she only has to get this guy with eight now. Uh, and then she's got a d12, and two d4 for the force missile, and then one d4 from Valeros because he's a fighter and that's what he does. And all she has to do is recharge. So we'll roll a bunch of. She needs an eight across 3d4 and a d12. 
three, five, uh, five, nine, twelve. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, this person is dead with with probably several force missiles. I'm imagining a force missile is like a magic missile. I mean, there's probably a magic missile card, but I don't know. Whatever it is, it's a force missile. Mi missile. It has bludgeoned him with magical force to death. And now she needs to succeed at a Charisma 5 check to search the location to get a free boon. Eight on the die. So, this guy is dead, and we can just look, over, look, look at the thing. Anything that's not a monster or a, a uh, henchman or a villain is, or a barrier is a boon. So she could take an armor, not interested. Um, she could take charm person. She could take a long bow. She could take mirror image. I liked mirror image. Uh, technically, yeah, I kind of liked that one. This one is bury this card and draw one random human ally from the box and add it to your hand. That's kind of cool. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay. So she has just gained Charm Person. Uh, if, no, uh, succeed at an Intelligence or Arcane 7 check to close the location. All right. Arcane check. She has a 2 for Arcane. She just rolled a 3 on her die. That does not do it. She has not closed this location successfully. It's too bad. Oh, but you know what? She's played a spell with the arcane trait. You may immediately draw a card. Yeah, but why would I want to draw a card? That that confuses me. Because if I drew a card, then I would also then have to discard a card in order to... Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how that's a benefit. I, I would then have to discard the card at the end of her turn. Don't understand that. It's very, very confusing. Okay. Um, anyway, it's Valeros' turn now, and he is going to attempt to... No, he doesn't get to attempt to close the location. He just has to keep exploring. Oh, so that... That, um, yeah. So I do... I need to shuffle this deck now, because, um, I had kind of assumed that there was not going to be a deck anymore, and so I just removed the monsters and just didn't bother with anything. I really didn't think she would be able to fail an arcane check, honestly. She just doesn't. She doesn't do that. That's what, I should have used a blessing card. Very, very clearly. I should have used a blessing card. Okay. So we're, we're back to square one with the Thessalonian dungeon, unfortunately. That's really a pity. So now we, we, we have to get through this deck. There's no other opportunity to close it. I don't know why I didn't spend a spell to add a, a die to her check. Bad, bad move. All right, ticking over a timer card there. Mirror image. I mean, I don't believe this matters, because if he doesn't have arcane skill, which he doesn't, he's going to have to banish the card. So why even bother? Uh, that was his turn. Now it's uh, Sione's turn, and it's probably a monster. It is. It's a goblin cut purse. Now this is a goblin, so he gets a bonus of plus two. Before the encounter, succeed at a Wisdom or Perception, or bury one random card from your hand. Wow, that's horrible. Don't want to do that at all. Really don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, wait. Sh first, so what is it? Wisdom or Perception? Oh, yeah, I was seeing if I had anything for Perception. I don't. Okay. So, uh, Wisdom. That's a D6 for her. Where's my D6s? I think they're all used up as markers right now. Yeah, I'll put this one, this boring one, there, too. Okay, uh, so what am I doing? Wisdom or something. Six. Wisdom six check. So she does not have to bury a card. I am very happy about that. So now she has to figure out how to defeat this creature. And that's the trick, isn't it? Because she's got armor, she's got charm person. You know what? She does have... So this is eight plus two, so that's a ten. 
I don't think this is going to be... Yeah, I don't think this would be smart. Would it, though? Because, I mean, okay, it would be a d6. Instant plus one. A d4 plus one. Because she, cause I gave her a plus one level up on her uh, melee skill. Because I knew her melee skill was very bad. Uh, and then... D6, D4. Oh, yeah, and then another D4 from Valeros. And all she has to do to get all of that... Oh, she could discard this for yet another D6. I'm kind of feeling like maybe that's the way to go. So, yeah, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to send Sione into, into melee. So she's discarding this. That's probably a mistake. But I just... Oh, wait. If you aren't proficient with weapons, the difficulty for this check is increased by four. She's not proficient with weapons. She's a sorcerer. Um, I think. I mean, I guess I should just double check, but... Uh, no, there's no proficiencies listed. <laughs> She's not proficient with weapons. Okay, so that's useless. You know what this is a great candidate for, then? This is a great candidate for a card to discard to invoke her innate spellcasting ability of a d12 and a d6. Of course, she's got her built-in arcane bonus of a plus two, which negates his bonus of plus two. So that's easy to, to get rid of. So now we're down to just needing an eight to defeat this guy. She also gets a d4 from Valeros, because he's in the same location as her. So I'm looking for an 8 across d12, d6, and d4. 3. It's an okay start. 4. Really good start, or really good finish, I guess, because it's impossible to roll less than a 1 on a d12, so that's 3. So she has defeated this little monster, who threatened to, to bury... A random card from her uh, deck. What a what a horrible little creature. Well, he's dead now. Okay, cool. So, she's down what? She's down one card, so she needs to draw up to six. So she's got Invisibility, Charm, Arcane. Did she just play an Arcane spell? Yes, she did. So she could have actually drawn a card immediately, but I guess there's no point in that now, so... Ticking over the card. It's actually Valeros's turn now. Four cards in his hand, so he's good to go. He's exploring. And it's a longbow plus one. Oh, that's so cool and so impossible for him. He can't get a nine on dexterity, sadly. He is a D8 in dexterity, so this just goes away. I kind of, I'm almost feeling like maybe ditching. A blessing so that he can explore again, but I guess that's just not worth it. It would have been so nice if I'd cleared out this location. I would have really, obviously, have preferred that. Skeleton, Sioni, back in combat. Eight. Does she have an attack spell yet? No, she still doesn't have her attack spell. It's too bad. Um, okay. So she's got to discard something. Uh, and I think I'm just going to have her discard the Bracers because she's got Arcane Armor, which she can recharge. So getting rid of that doesn't really hurt that much. And it allows her to... Now remember, this is a not a Goblin, so he gets no bonuses. Okay, perfect. In that case, she gets her plus two for her Arcane. She gets her Arcane Die and an extra D6 because of her innate spell casting ability, a d4 from her friend Valeros. So she's looking for an 8 total. That's a 1. Really bad start. I don't like those starts. 5. That's better. She's defeated the skeleton. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, so she's defeated the skeleton. It's dead. Okay, here's the tricky thing. If Valeros turns this card over, he's going to be the one 
to try to close the location, which means that he's going to... Rec oh, Intelligence 7. Okay, that's actually not that bad. We'll have to spend a blessing for him to add a, another die to his intelligence. It would be better for her to do it, though, honestly. So maybe we should spend a blessing so that she can... Ooh, you know what? This could be cool. What if we spent the charm person... That's burying this card, right? Yeah, bury the card to get a random human ally. So just taking a card from the box. It's a sage. We can discard this card to explore again. Leather armor. It's actually just a two to acquire. Uh, I mean, she can acquire this and then just give it over to, um, to Valeros. Uh, I imagine her constitution is probably a d6. She rolled a 2. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Is her dexterity 6, first of all? I mean, her constitution. Yeah, it is. Dexter uh, constitution is a d6. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ah, oh, but there's an increase in the difficulty check. No, there's not. It's, it's items or weapons, not armor. So the armor is what it says, is, is what it is on the card. So she acquires that into her hand. Which is great, because that means she's going to have to draw less to get back up to six. She'll only have to draw one from her, from her deck, which is good, because I don't like to draw cards. Although, I could have her draw a card immediately now, because she cast... Did she cast something? No, she didn't cast anything. What am I talking about? Okay, that's fine. So now she has to try to close this location finally by succeeding at an intelligence or arcane. So f to make sure that this sticks, I'm going to discard a blessing of the gods and she's going to draw, uh, she's going to um, roll two arcane die, eight. She only needed a seven, she has an eight plus two. She succeeded without that blessing, but you know, you can't tell until you try. So this is a closed location now. That's two locations closed, which leaves two locations as possible location uh, as possible hideouts for the villain. So I'm drawing back up to six for Sioni. She doesn't have an attack spell right now, which makes me very nervous, but she does have a, a total evasion spell, so that's good. But we'll continue exploring a new location next time.